Okay. Hi, good morning, everyone. Okay. Um, you see some of the participants is already in. Yeah, can, can you hear me clearly? The rest of the participants? Okay, if you have any problem, you can just uh, reconnect or uh, refresh your, uh, your computer. Okay, so, um, okay, good morning. Okay, uh, the rest of the people yourself, and then you are from where, and what is your position? Okay, maybe I uh, and I can uh, have a look. You know, uh, you can see your chat from here. Your from where, so I think we can get an idea. All right. <clears throat> okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. <clears throat> okay. Let me introduce myself. So my name is Dami. I'll be your host for today. Okay. Um, right. So today we will learn about water waste management, and maintenance, and reliability. Right. Okay. This is about Alani Asia. We are actually a uh, organization as a professional training provider. Um, uh, we actually find expert and speaker in the industry. So previously we are doing um face to face training. So currently because of the COVID and everyone uh, going to move to a new norm, right? So we have to go to to virtual learning. That this session we have to enjoy and have a good experience. Okay, so this is uh, uh, let me introduce a little bit about Ms. Nora uh, uh, profile. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe some of the participants already know her. This is quite famous in the East. Okay, so um, she really uh, has experience for almost 12 years in the gas plant, where she started in 2007 as engineer in Petronas of Rekat. Later, she continued her service in asset management and risk management consultancy. In educational institute. She currently works as a new engineer in the profile portfolio as an asset integrity management and risk management in the capital service member high quality information. So now uh, she's run uh, in engineering engineering and management, including maintenance management. Okay, so hopefully uh, we have a clear about uh, Ms. Nora Pokka. So um yeah okay Be before that i have uh, some uh here um guidelines okay if you don't know how to use this platform okay you can simply chat simply type your message in the chat box all right and then uh for question you can uh you can put your question in the chat box and then I uh, change the mood to feel in the mood. Right? So I will read the question if you are to interrupt me if I am reading and doing the presentation. So if you would like to speak to Panora, please request the speak button here. So the speak button here on the top of the uh, here button, right? So we will uh, enable your mic. So if you don't want to enable your camera, so you just speak. Right? Okay, without further ado, let me introduce you our school trainer, Ms. Laura. Can you introduce yourself? Okay, um, so I, before that, I would like to share my screen first. So, nampak kan? Can you see? Um, can you see my screen? Danita, boleh nampak my screen tak? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so before that, I would like to say um um thank you so much for the organizer, which is Island Asia, for inviting me to become a guest speaker for this um session, water risk management. And I would like to say thank you so much for everyone who willing to participate in this session. It, it just a forty to sixty minutes um um uh, session about water risk management. And as you know that we are in the day 15 of Ramadan and we are more than 50 days of um, MCO in Malaysia. 
So I hope you're still energetic, motivated, and and um, still having um, um, like energy to to learn about this. Um, so a little bit about myself just now. Um, Miss Danita already informed about my background, but just um, a little introduction that my experience is mostly related to asset management and risk management. So I've been trained. Um, I've been involving with um, training risk management mostly both I for five years back when I was in Petronas as well. And currently I've been training groups of people from Petronas Gas, Petronas Sarigali, um, CML from Indonesia, three session with the team last year and also with um, Saudi International Petrochemical. And I work with other partner as well to deliver the course. So that will be my introduction about myself. So um, within this um, session, basically, um, my module cover basically for two or three days, but um, please bear with me. I'm going to sh um, to shortcut ev almost everything in, in to make sure you you can cater um, the important element within this 30 minutes. So I'm going to cover in section one is on the introduction of risk management and how it relates to maintenance and reliability. Section two will be covering on the what, why, how is Botai. Section three will be covered on the construction of Botai. And section four will be on the benefits of the Botai. And um, we're, going to we're going to have a questions and answer. Um, before that, I'm, I'm, I, I have to uh, mention that I am here today not to teach you, but I hope this is a sharing session uh, because I do believe that there are some of us who already knew about the Botai and, and well known about the maintenance and reliability um, related issues in, in this risk management. So, um, okay, before I start, um, um, I came crossing this article um, from Oppo and Hogan published in 2014. They were study about um, maintenance related to major accident cases and um, they found that from 184 major accident occurring in the pro process industry, um, 43 out of that is actually related to maintenance uh, costs. So um, the reason I'm trying to bring um, both the risk management into a maintenance and reliability related area is that because of the importance of everyone, not just safety practitioner, but also the engineers in, in maintenance and reliability to understand the basic risk management. Um, because the daily task, the daily contribution towards the business is actually significant to avoid and to stop the major accidents from occurring. So that would be um, the reason why I think that both risk management is actually um, need to be connected to maintenance and reliability. So to cover this um, section one on risk management processes. So basically, what is risk management? Um, um, before that, I would like to um, remind, give a reminder to you guys that if you have a question, can you just um, put it in the chat, uh, chat, uh, field, chat field, so then we can go back after this to review your questions and, and answer later. So basically, risk management is actually an iterative process. Um, when we talk about iterative process, it's actually a process that um, having the desired outcome, having a goal. And in order to achieve the goal, in order to achieve the desired outcomes, you need to have a series of operational steps. So um, just um, uh, based on the risk management ISO 13001, there is a four key activities that I want everyone to understand by basic, it's, it's not complicated, just the basic things that I hope after this, you may understand what is a risk management process if someone asking you about that. So basically, it's just four, um, four key activities. It's about identification, assessing, control, and recover. So there is a difference between identify and assess. There is also a difference between control and recover. When you have a, a business operation, when you have a um, um, context, I mean, activity you're doing and you want to achieve the goal, you want to achieve the outcome. And there is always a threat that um, potentially leading you to not achieving um, the goal. So you need to identify that. Um, basically, actually, you, you may find numbers of um, questions 
um, to facilitate you to identify the hazard, to identify the risk, to identify the threats. So I'm just giving you a few here, which is um, in your activity, in, in order to, for you to achieve your outcome or goals, does anyone or anything exposed to harm? And, and what do you have in your activities that is going to help you, yourself, your team, or, or the whole process? And when it comes to assess, um, you, you facilitate your thought that I'm, I'm now having my, my, my risk, my, my um, having the threat. So um, what is going to give a consequence? What is the result of this um, process, of this threat? Um, how likely it's going to occur? So you're going to identify and then you're going to assess. And when it comes to control, it's basically trying to go back to something that you identify and think of how... I need to eliminate, I need to prevent and stop the process from happening. And when it comes to recover, the difference between the control is that recover actually when things already happen, but you need to mitigate, you need to bring back the abnormal state to the normal state. So that's the difference between recover and control. So this is the four elements that I hope um, after this, um, there is um, in, in everyone's mind, mostly all engineers, know that what is risk management process. So when it's really for maintenance and reliability, when we're doing maintenance tasks, reliability tasks, all the strategies actually leading us with numbers of objective. And you're gonna say it is relates to the uh, mid time to repair, mid time to restore, uh, mean time, mean time before failure, inventory management, bills of materials and whatsoever. So so much more, which is which is actually leading you to to um, to the goals, production excellence, operation excellence, and HSE excellence. However, as I mentioned to you, everything having its own threat. So um, that's the reason that we are looking. Uh, uh, Nora, uh, Nora uh, can, can we uh, give a second? Because some of the participants, they couldn't, they couldn't hear or see anything. So let me check with every, everyone. everyone uh, do you have any problem? Can you actually see the, uh, the slide? The okay. A few times, we enter several, see the same. Can um, I share? I mean, refresh. Okay. Uh, is it uh, anyone address code? Any problem? Besides neural uh, Basla? Chabirao, can you still uh, online? Okay, uh, let me know. Can you, can everyone let me know from here if your if your screen is is good, is fine, then you can continue because some of the participants said they cannot reconnect. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Is there any way? Yeah, we have a uh, we have a YouTube live um YouTube live uh, on going right now. So uh, I'll give you the link. If you have any problem, uh, I see the webinar. Okay, we will give you the link now. Yeah? Okay, one more question on the link. I'll get the link for me for you right now. Okay, but, uh, hold on. Can you get the link? Okay. Maybe so, you can type as well, Benita. Yeah, yeah, I you can, can type on the link. Yeah. Okay, ah, uh, yes, my team here, uh, me, Mr. Ali, already did the link here. You can go to the YouTube if you have a problem. The rest is okay. Mr. Lim said it's okay. All right. Uh, okay. Continue, Nora. Okay. You can continue. Eh? For anything, can you, you, you can disrupt me. Eh? Um, right. okay. You can interrupt me. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we come into section two, actually. So we cover a bit on risk management process, section one. I cannot cover the whole thing, cannot give example because we are only on 50, uh, sorry, 40 to 60 minutes. So what actually, why, why both die actually? And if you can see from this image now, actually the people swearing um, the both die on the net and why actually this, this relates to the both are risk management. Um, so basically, the image, the shape of the bow ties on the people's and on the and around the people's neck just now is actually has inspired the, the establishment of the bow tie risk management technically. And if you're looking on the um, 
if you're looking on the internet, on the Google, that there is numbers of um, history behind the construction, the development of both our risk management. And there are a few, few versions, but the most popular one is, the, is, uh, uh, is um, uh, mentioning about Royal Dutch Shell taking, um, reinvent, reinvented the cost effect consequences from the um, Piper Alpha incident. Um, Piper Alpha incident investigation um, into the bow tie um, method. So as you can see from the bow tie shape, um, uh, the risk management engineer previously was taking it um, into three main elements. If you can see, there is a middle circle um, on the bow tie and there is a rotated pyramid on the left side and on the right side of the bow tie. So actually, this is a visual representation of um, what can cause the important e event and what events could result. I'm going to explain this detail on the next on the letter slide. And throughout the um, construct, uh, throughout the, um, the process to the event, there is a barriers that need to, pre need to prevent the cost from occurring to the event. And in between the event, the consequences, there must be another control to control to make sure the top event will not giving severity to the consequences. All right, I proceed to technically this is um, the idea of how we do the both that you have the hazardous event as a top event, unwanted event in the middle as um, in the middle, then it, it facilitates your thought before the event, what is the threat? What is the process that potentially um, leads me to the event? And on the right side, there's it, it facilitates your thoughts on what is the consequences um, that potentially coming from the event. From the event, so in between the threat to the event, there are control measure. In between the event to the consequence, there also um, another recovery measure. So on the left side, we call it preventions, and on the left side is on the recovery. All right, so. Basically, when you when you do bow tie and people asking what can I do, where can I apply the bow tie? Um, I remember last time in the other class I was joining as participant, and a few years back, um, they were asking whether can I do the bow tie for hazard, um, like I want to drive in long distance as an hazard and what's the potential event. So yeah, you can uh, conduct the risk assessment using bow tie as simple as you want to drive to for the long journey if you. If you think that is, um, if you think that you want to take details um, view on the risk management on that, and actually, what I um, widely use as um, widely use if in Malaysia we're using this in all and guess, but basically in other country it has been used in other industry like aviation, um, health, um, a defense industry, and and many others. So. Actually, you can use Botai for the business upset, and I'm trying to introduce the um, for the equipment failure and also integrity failure. Um, so um, we're going to section three, quick one on how you construct the Botai. Okay, ready? So the first thing to construct the Botai, you need to identify what is hazard. After you identify the hazard, you need to identify that the event of the hazard. Then you need to identify the threat. The left side of the boat I just now facilitate you to identify what is the potential threat, what is the potential causes that could lead you to the event. And from the event, you assess what is the consequences, what is the result, the outcomes coming from the unwanted event, the abnormal event. So that's the idea of um, constructing the boat eye. And you have the prevention control in between threat to event. And the reason you put in prevention control because you, you want to stop the threat from meeting to the event, from meeting the event. And, and you have the recovery measure because you want to reduce, you want to mitigate um, the consequences because events already happened, but you just need to uh, make sure that you can recover it um, to avoid more severe consequences. All right. Um, so basically, when I'm talking about about prevention control, about recovery measure, it's basically it's barriers. And what does it mean by barriers? You can check in ISO one two four four one or ISO risk management or asset management. Barrier is basically um, anything 
um, something that can stop and prevent, reduce um, uh, something from not happening, can, can reduce the harm uh, from happening, from occurring. Um, so example of the barrier, um, I'm not going to go details about this, but you, you probably may maybe heard about soft barrier and also hard barrier. When we talk about hard barrier, it's a physical assets, it's a, your equipment which is functioning to, to, to functioning to um to prevent the, the accident, to prevent um uh threat from meeting the event, the top event. And um, maybe you have the soft barrier to put in place and soft barrier is basically your procedure, the administrative process and, and so on. That is just an uh, example that I could, I could um, mention here. Okay, so we have an example here. Let's say you have a hazard, um, flammable gas as a hazard in pipeline, flammable gas in pipeline as a hazard. So you're gonna have a, um, you're gonna have a top event, which is the release of that flammable gas from the pipeline. So what is potential threat that could lead to this event? It is because of corrosion. Okay, you're going to say that this is corrosion, internal or external corrosion, and you're going to say probably there is a drop object due to working at high with a heavy load. So going to hit the pipeline, so it's going to release the flammable gas. So you assess the consequence now, there will be a potential vapor cloud of that flammable gas. And potentially, if the release gas meet the ignition source, then the potentially it is going to ignite, or it's going to lead to the flash fire. Okay? So, so um, yeah, I have a quiz. Can you think of barriers here, prevention measure, in order for you to stop the corrosion from happening and then corrosion will not move to the next stage, which is releasing the, the flammable gas. Adiora, Nadja, please. Danita? Okay, so, uh, hi, everyone. Okay, can actually someone uh, just put the answer in the chat box so we can, you know, uh, know the quiz answer. Or maybe who, who wants to, I cannot read the chat box now because it's, it's my screen. Yes, if I, will, I will read it for you. Anyone can guess what do you think you can put as a prevention measure? Okay, the question is again, Ms. Nora? Uh, the question is, can you think of, the question is on the slide, actually, can you think of barrier here in, 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 in making sure the corrosion is not happening? Okay, all right, we have uh, some answer here. Ms. Nora Hatim Pilzati said that uh, periodic inspection of pipeline. Okay, okay, nice try. And then Mr. Patmanagan said flame detector. Again? Flame detector. Play detector, okay. Yeah, okay, uh, or play detector. All right. Uh huh. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, you I, I'm going to hang you with that, with that answer. Okay, so I'm going to move to next. Can you think of the barrier as a mitigation measure? So just now, Mr. Pat Manaban saying that um, gas detector, or is it gas detector actually in the mitigation side? because it's already happening you need something to detect because if you can detect something you can reduce the severity of the vapor cloud from happening so where do you think actually is suitable so um there is no yes and answer yet i'm not going to give you because it's going to get to long discussion a very technical discussion but your idea is there you know where to put barrier it just is it the barrier is truly on the left side or truly on the right side? Okay, thank you for trying. I'm going to go to the next example. Let's say this is purely on maintenance. You were saying that bearing failure as a hazard, okay? You're putting bearing failure as a hazard. So, um, causes, uh, sorry, the event for this is pump is not working. Your pump is not working. So there is a potential threat that, um, that, um, that uh, leading to the pump not working, which is, um, lack of greasing okay and potentially there is disturbance due to high vibration from the other equipment that is being located nearby to your palm so it's transferred the vibrations to your palm so your bearing got affected so there is the effect which is the process upset loss of production and potentially customer complaint because you cannot produce the um, production you cannot produce your 
um, your product. So, okay, again, code play with me. Can you answer? Um, what is the barrier here? You think of barrier for for this um, situation? Okay, then. Uh, uh, said protection. Again. Okay. And not, not protection. And not protection. Yeah, and um, I, I think that one is the answer for the previous oh. slide. Okay, this is the one. All right. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Cik Abdul Hadi said schedule preventive maintenance. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Patman say uh, grease cap. Yeah. Grease cap, is it? Uh, okay. I to create maintenance program. Um, okay. So, uh, prevent okay. maintenance. Okay, then... All right. Good try. Good try. So, um, okay, because we need to do it quickly. Okay, what is the barrier, the cat mitigation measure? Where's the barrier for the mitigation measure? Um, because farm is not working and it's going to let the process become upset and this is important strategy for maintenance and reliability you cannot put your equipment so long do you, um under repair right so what is the strategy here what you think that the task or the barrier that to make sure the farm is working immediately uh in general you maybe say reliability plan but 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 in in detail mr backup pump. okay backup pump okay sparing sparing Okay. Fair. Right, right. Fair. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. All right. Good. Nice try. Nice. Very good. Okay. Okay. So, um, so this is just additional information. I just put this um this morning, um, just sharing with you that I found in the Oppo Hogan and Venom pub published paper in 2016. And if you go um through the online, you can have Oppo and Hogan um papers lots talking about the maintenance related to major accidents so if you're looking at this um okay actually this is actually a graph um on the y-axis is the risk level on the x-axis is the situation um the 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 face the faces of process equipment preventive maintenance okay in a condition is uh, the equipment is normal state in a b situation um sorry not equipment but um uh the, the situation is um in normal operation b is in isolation and blinding state c so this is based activity based um risk eh? activity based risk during normal during isolation during preventive on the c on the d is during the reinstatement e is just during startup and let's say this is about the psv your pressure safety valve need to be taken for 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 recertification that you have to go through um the isolation the b b B situation first, then go to C and to D and to the E and then F. This is what the graph is trying to say. So actually, I'm trying to facilitate you. If you want to do hazard related to activity, hazard related to activity based, and we're going to um, because um, based on the research, they were saying that actually preventive maintenance itself has introduced new hazard to the business actually so they were saying that um isolation and blinding activities just now if you can see on the b part is actually quite high compared to in normal operation compared to um startup so if we taking this into the example of the bot eye we are saying that if this is the has hazard based on activity is isolation and blinding activities we can mention this as hazard so during the isolation and blinding, there potentially a release of unwanted energy, um, potentially the gas or potentially the liquid. So if you think of the uh, potential threat, um, you may be think of any others, but what I have now in my mind is potentially the substandard procedure relating to the isolation, maybe the wrong procedure, um, and maybe those who are doing is not competent, okay? And you may say um, many other threats. Um, so on the consequences I have here, potentially there is people injuries. I mean, the workers injuries because of the release of unwanted energy and potentially the flash fire because of the, um, because of the ignition source everywhere in the plant, um, if you're doing it during life, but um, you can thought of any other situation related to this. But I'm going to have another question. What is the barrier here to avoid to avoid the tracks here, 
to prevent the threats meeting the top event. Okay, anyone can answer it? <laughs> or I just giving I'm just leaving you with the thoughts. <laughs> Yeah. And there is a what is the barrier here? So basically, that is the um, the way that we do both. Uh, we facilitate from the hazard to the causes to the sorry from the hazard to the top event, and we go back to the left side and we come back to the right side. So it makes the whole construction of the both. Uh, and basically, to both details, actually, it's not just leaving you at a prevention control or recovery measure. Not just leaving you um, the barriers to put, but actually leading you to to put on the what does need I what does what support need I need to uh, put with my barrier so that my barrier can work effectively and efficiently. So there is another layer elements in the both I introduced here, which is on the escalation factor and escalation factor control. So basically, when you have the barriers, you can see the prevention control as your barrier. You can see the recovery measure as your barrier. So now there's another second thought that both die facilitate you, which is escalation factor. They are asking you basically this is the threat. It is second layer of threat that potentially could harm your barrier, your prevention control. That what is the escalation factor that potentially could harm, could um could disturb the function of your recovery measure. Just now, Mr. Patmanaban saying that here is actually um um, for example, just now you were saying about gas detector as the recovery measure, or you were saying here just now as a recovery measure. So um, the gas detector itself, if it is the barrier, what is the potential threat or escalation factor that may cause um, it's not functioning to detect? Okay. So if you have the threats for that barrier, how can you control that threat from not meet from not disturbing your prevention control? So there is another layers that um, we need to understand in the both side in order for us to un to, to, to complete come out with um, the risk management um, for the both side. And it sounds like complicated, but when we do two or three exercise, and um, actually you can do the exercise in your related field. I remember last time, the first time I'm doing both side, I'm facilitating the both side for the well integrity team, and it's good it's good feedback from them because they were saying that they thought that both are actually for the process has it and when when they are doing for well integrity actually they can see the clearly on the um, assurance on the SCE on the um, you know the other things that they can put in place on prevention and recovery measure so it just um, this is another sample on the both I that you in general sample both I for maintenance. I'm making the hazard in general way, which is mechanical failure and equipment breakage as the hazard. And you're gonna and this is gonna lead you to various process safety and occupational safety incident. And remember, this is just on the left side on the prevention control. And in order, um, sorry, um, what is the potential threat that could lead the failure? Um, to the unwanted event, so potentially the equipment malfunction, equipment malfunctions, and um, the box here, the sorry, um, the the white box here, one, two, three, effective design, um, predict maintenance is actually the barriers, and there is another escalation factor which is threat to the barrier in a yellow box here, and. Besides the yellow box, there is another escalation factor control. Control for the threat, so that threat will not disturb the um, the control, the, the prevention control, the barriers. So this is the sample, and maybe I can share with you after the session. I think. Miss Nora. Uh, 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 Nora. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you someone can you answer? Right, the question is like from Tech Hyrule Aizad Is that bow tie risk management applicable to breakdown section? Okay, uh, can, can we go through the slide first before we go to the question and answer? You can just type the question and answer, then yes. because we have that session. Yes. Okay, so this is a okay. You just can type, everyone can just type the question and Danita will we'll, um, read after the, the slide. I'm, I'm about to finish this slide actually. Yeah, okay. So, Okay, so the equipment. Uh, this is a sample for equipment fatigue. Uh, sorry, the threat due to equipment fatigue. 
um, for the same as it is now, and you have number of, of um, various here, and we have a task, uh, task for the barrier itself. Okay, so this is the comprehensive sample of the barrier. Okay, I'm gonna share with you, I think Danita will send email and share with you on the sample, I think. Um, the benefit you see is actually on the visualization of the potential risk of failure from left to the right. And obviously you can identify and manage the prevention control and the recovery measure before the event and after the event. It facilitates your thought to start from A to Z, okay? Um, it is facilitated risk-based decision making, not just for process upset, but also for the equipment failure and for any other situations. And, and many more, which is I actually, um, uh, it also can help you to, to actually, it can assist you in, in incident investigation as well and also in audit as well. Um, okay, so questions and answer. Okay, just now the question. Yeah. Hello, Danita. Okay, hi. Right. Uh, he asking about is that um, management applicable to breakdown section? And uh, then can I read the sorry, can I read that from the chat? Okay. Um how do I can you see the chat block? Yes, it is. Oh okay, so what is the question? Okay, the question is uh number, number we have two questions here okay one from Cairo Aizad Muhari okay I repeat again is that the bow tie with management applicable to breakdown section and then number two is from CRGV uh tie is part of hazard or is it a, a separate process okay and then CRGV also asking if bow tie is part of hazard hazard or is it a straight process um, okay, basically to answer the heads up is part of both. No, basically this is based on a previous exercise that I've done with Petronas case. Basically, um, Bota is not part of hazard, but hazard is um, can lead that can guide you to do both or not. So because from the heads up, you may find um, which is the high risk, which is of the low risk process hazard process risk. So from that, uh, basically, we are taking the medium risk and high risk process related hazard and then we we go detail using the bow tie so you're doing hazard for different purpose and you're doing bow tie for different purpose actually um risk measure applicable to break, breakdown section um if you're referring to breakdown maintenance I'm, I'm not um just now i'm i show you this sample of how you how, how this can facilitate you on the breakdown and i uh, there is no saying anywhere that both tie cannot be done for breakdown and and can be down uh, can, sorry can be done for the breakdown it just um the matter of you want how, how what is the purpose of if you're just doing fmea for breakdown what is the purpose of just uh, for doing uh both is it's just um it go back to this your your own purpose but uh, for me if you're asking me whether it can be used or not i would say that yes it's more detailed um up to what kind of task and what is the threat for the task it is more detailed for me i i i would say that this is um applicable for breakdown result from um to what is the solution yes uh, basically yes because last time i remember um if, if you remember there is a ham process which is as has an effect management process you have has it um you identify hazard from the hazard you 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 have the list of hazard from the hazard you have the list of um hazard from the hazard and you, from that you can develop the both are based on the high risk of the hazard that you defined earlier so actually, um, bota is not to replace. Bota is not to replace heads up. Um, heads up is more related to. It is purely understanding the, um, the diversion. Sorry, what they call the. Um, when you want to do the the heads up, you need to identify the. 
um, sorry, I, I couldn't remember that. The, the name, uh, the deviation, sorry, the deviation of um, temperature, the pressure. So it is different. It's different. So yeah, um, so is done first. We achieve the assurance task. So that, that's the question. So basically, assurance task is part of you doing during you doing the botai exercise. Then you can from the botai exercise. So basically, assurance task is actually related to your safety critical elements, right? So, um, so you need to in the botai you need to define the safety critical elements first, and the and from the safety critical elements you need to define the assurance task. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, how long the study will even be for needing to do another another round of assessment in operation? Um, how long is the study relevant before needing to do another round of? Um, are you talking about risk management assessment? Um, I do believe, um, in in Petronas previously because I worked with Petronas previously, they have uh, or any other industry actually they are doing like three to five years. Um, revisit. If you're talking about revisit, and then the round is revisit, then it's three to five year revisit on the board uh, on the risk management and the assessment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I uh, uh, Can can we have uh, the overall process framework for risk management for covering both sides? MH, SCE, and has up and each. Um, I, I do believe I can only answer this in general. Um, uh, a risk management, as I mentioned to you, it is in ISO 13001, which is on the um, key activities, and the, the framework is on that. But on the both uh, on the MAH SCE has up, they have a specific guidelines, and sometimes this is re, re, this is actually um, go back to the um, to the business guideline itself. I mean. For example, you have numbers of um, operators in Malaysia in all angles. So sometimes they have a different different guidelines on their own SCE, their own hazard, their own ma. And risk management ISO 13001 is actually covering on the general framework. Actually, um, I cannot answer that the details into details. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Um, Manish. Hopefully, Mr. Manish, uh, if you are not really clear. We open the request to speak with Ms. Nora right now. If one wanted to speak with her, can can just to speak so we can like close the session. Oh, Cik Abdul Hadi asking about is it possible? Oh, okay, so is it possible? It's very interesting. Hi, Rek to both that. It's actually I would say yes because it's more. It's more systematic. It's more structured, and you can see clearly even when you're working with the foreigner who didn't read English, when you construct the bow tie, they don't need to go details in the wording style. They just go to the, diag to the di diagram and, and, you know, you make things um, simpler to those who are n um, simpler for um, non-technical to see what's the relationship between the hazard and, and, and the event and the consequences. So can can I know the Botai software? So because I'm not selling the software here, but I can suggest to you there is a Botai SP software and also um, SWOT. SWOT. There is uh, one software called SWOT Risk Management. SWOT Risk Management. And the software is that Botai Pro. So as of my knowledge, there's three software that I I I, I ever involved with saying that. Yeah. Okay. Thank so you. Welcome. So I think I, I need to pass back to Donita. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Ms. Right. Okay. I would like to um thank you to everyone for you know joining us for today. But we I have something to show you guys about um okay. Uh, yeah. So currently Okay, currently we have uh, this one. Okay, we having this um this course right now for promotion. Uh, okay, this class uh with your class.
Okay, sorry, I enabled my mic just now. Okay, hold on. Let me uh, introduce again. Okay, hold on. Okay, sorry. Okay, so yeah, from the first. How from the first? Okay, so right now, uh, sorry, just now I enabled my mind. Okay, I repeat again. We having a next class, Volatile Risk Management for Maintenance and Reliability, on 90 to 20 May 2020, yeah? 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., uh, the same platform webinar then, right? So currently, our price is 699 uh, 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 ringgit per tax, all right? So we having a promotion right now is uh, ringgit per 499 per tax, and the group pricing is uh, the good news. Registered three packs get four seats for only ninety nine ringgit. Uh, three packs for the four can get only forty five for only ninety nine ringgit. Okay, so this is I show again the the text online what you will get for the two days. One one day is only four hours. You can having a break session as well during the day. So we have an introduction to risk management, the water method, barrier in water diagram, hands on exercise, and discussion also. And day two we have that some hands on exercise and group discussion as well. All right, okay. That's um, okay. Okay. So let me exit this one. Um, before you guys leaving, uh, actually, I I, I I have two more slides. Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry. Okay, um, wait, wait, I share something. Um, okay, guys, sorry. Um, Actually, I am actually leaving you with this quiz and you're gonna think of it um, at your home. So um, when you're alone or you're with your friends, um, maybe you can think of this. I'm gonna leave you with this quiz um, in both eye where it's actually safety harness can be placed if you think of working at high is the hazard. Another one is that in both eye where there's actually pressure safety valve can be placed in the scenario of high pressure inside the vessel because during my class last time the engineers and manager were fighting actually not 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 fighting it's like much i'm arguing that the safety harness should be in the left side and there's or and some people were saying it's supposed to be in the right side and um, and so so does the, for the pressure safety valve and the other sce elements so i'm gonna leave you with that questions last but not least i hope we can stay in touch you can get me in get, get in touch with me in linkedin and this is um bunch of photos that i've been with um petronas group petronas Gali, petronas um gas and the hcml um jakarta groups and so i hope that um you get something from me today and hope we can keep in touch so denita i pass back to you okay denita i pass back to you I think you enable your mic. Cannot hear. Thank you so much. Uh, I I that sometimes my background is like so echo. I don't know the line today, right? So still clear. Right, this is our next session for the free class. Okay, and you can have it, right? So yeah. Okay. This is an opportunity we reach to you guys about the two groups here. Uh, and also the about the the data. By the way, thank you so much and happy Ramadan. Thank you so much, Ms. Nora. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Danita, and everyone. Yeah, hopefully you can have a nice berbuka puasa next time. Okay, and the rest of the thank you for joining Island today. Uh, have thank a you. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye. Take care.